Hello, today I'd like to show you a project I've been working on. I call it the E1602. First, let's go over some inspirations. The first is the Texas Instruments TI-99-8 and its main processor, the TMS-9900. The 9900 was based on the TI-990, which was a mini-computer and built differently than a microprocessor would. These weird quirks found their way into the 9900 and caused it to be radically different from its contemporaries. The second inspiration would be esoteric programming languages. Esoteric languages, or esolangs, are specifically designed to be weird and unusual in order to explore exotic concepts. Lastly, I was also inspired by network topologies, specifically in this case, a ring topology. Next, let's go over the concepts that went into the E1602. A MISC architecture, expandable CPU pipeline, and unidirectional flow are the essential parts of the 1602. Now, what is a MISC architecture? Well, MISC stands for Minimal Instruction Set Computer. You see, computers usually have an inverse relationship between speed per instruction and the complexity of that instruction. Generally, what this means is that while complex instruction sets are easier for a programmer to work with and more concise, reduced instruction sets can be faster. Now, let's switch gears to talking about that unidirectional bus. Almost all integrated circuits are bidirectional, which means information traveling on its bus has to take turns moving in and out. With a unidirectional bus, however, information can move in and out of the chip simultaneously without having to wait. Now, while being more time efficient is great, a unidirectional processor has more interesting possibilities. Here I have a diagram of a simple multiprocessor computer using unidirectional buses. As you can see, information can freely move in a loop without causing conflict. Now, I have a slightly more complicated system. There are three loops information can travel through, which allows both CPUs to access some shared memory. However, the big disadvantage to this is the lack of existing support for unidirectional devices. Instead, you'd have to use dual port RAM, which has two bidirectional buses, which we can use as two unidirectional buses. Unfortunately, dual port RAM is small and expensive, two properties which are not ideal. This leaves us with a couple of pros and cons. While it is simpler, possibly faster, and has multiprocessing capabilities, it also requires dual port RAM, almost double the pins, and is not compatible with most coprocessors. But to really understand the advantages of the E1602, we have to look a little deeper. So, I'm going to take you through a few levels of detail, going from microcode to functions, and then, at the end, an example of how the E1602 might be used in a computer. This is a quick cheat sheet showing the instructions and modifiers if you really want to see that. While it would be helpful in this presentation, it isn't necessary. So, starting with the microcode, let's see how the processor breaks down instructions and uses their components. First, the CPU reads add and var into the in bus. These are moved down into the instruction decoder, and the information is passed to the ALU, or the arithmetic and logic unit. Then, ABC and LI are decoded, and the information is passed into the address controller. Then, the address stored in IADR 0x3CAB is placed onto the address bus. At this point, one cycle has passed. Now, the value from memory is loaded into the in bus, added to register A, and placed on the out bus. 
Now, let's move on to the instruction level. On the left here, we have a small program. We will only go through a couple of instructions, so we'll get through this fairly quickly. The first instruction, NOP LI IREGA 0x0, tells the processor to load the value 0x0 into register A. The next few instructions, NOPE LI LO OREGA OX something, will write the value in register A to the memory location 0x something. The next instruction isn't relevant here since it controls bank switching, and that's not important right now. Now, the next instruction will load 0x0010 into the in address. We could go further, but this is enough. Next, let's abstract a little and look at groups of instructions. On the left here, we have a couple of simple functions. I've also labeled the basic function on them. On the right, I have a multiply and divide function. Both of these take advantage of some design quirks, so they make a little less sense than the ones on the left. Now, we have to talk about how to interface the E1602 with other devices. This is a simple block diagram of how you might achieve that. If the processor is loading in data, the in address is put onto the device's address bus, and the result of the bidirectional bus is put onto the in bus. If the processor is loading out information, the out address is put onto the device's address bus, and the out bus's data is put onto the bidirectional data bus. But if the CPU is trying to do both, the bidirectional device deactivates and neither are done. To convert from the unidirectional buses to a bidirectional bus, we can design a computer using available components. This is a block diagram showing a simple computer we could design in this way. While a FIFO dual port RAM and the E1602 itself can be put on the unidirectional bus, the rest of the components are all forced to be interfaced through the unidirectional to bidirectional converter. This isn't ideal since it will force the computer to run slower, but there isn't any way around it. Now that I've described the hardware and logical side of the processor, I'll show you some of the ways I've tested it. I've built emulators in Python and C++, and I'm currently working on one in Verilog. An emulator in Verilog will allow me to go from purely software emulation to hardware emulation, which will speed up the emulator massively. But until then, I'm continuing to develop the idea. If you want to support my effort, you can go to my Patreon at patreon.com slash stingpie. I really hope someday I can make a career out of my little projects, but right now that's a little bit of a pipe dream. Thank you anyway for watching, I really appreciate it. Have a nice day.